Torchlight Infinite is a brand new upcoming ARPG coming to open beta in October 2022 and is free to play cross platform to both mobile and PC, available to Steam wishlist right now. Unlike the vast majority of mobile slash PC cross platform ARPGs, Torchlight Infinite is designed in a way that microtransactions will not affect gameplay progression, and there's also no annoying daily timed online events, meaning you can just play the game when you actually feel like it. Gameplay and features wise, Torchlight Infinite has extremely fast paced combat, short cooldowns, lots of abilities to press, responsive movement and most importantly, an ocean of possibilities when it comes to creating a build as you'll see later in this video. Aside from that, the game has a main storyline with cutscenes, a massive amount of zones to play through, challenging bosses that will smash you to bits if you ignore their mechanics, and comfy stylized graphics. This video is sponsored by Torchlight Infinite, but the team has allowed me to talk freely and honestly about the things that I like and dislike about the game, with the usual pros and cons at the end. Click the link in the description below to add Torchlight Infinite to your Steam wishlist for the open beta in October. Torchlight Infinite, let's jump into it. You got the Berserker, the Gunslinger, an Elementalist, she's got like a Frostfire gauntlet, pretty cool. Spacetime Illusion, some kind of arcane mage, and the Big Bearded Dwarf. I'm obviously going to be the berserker. The lazy peon, start. So there's no character customization, you're just playing a hero. Intro cutscene, setting the story. And we've awoken. Move around with the mouse. I got my right click, which seems pretty cool. Got my Q ability, what does that do? Oh, it's like a heal. Unlocked a new skill. So this is a support skill, it's a passive that I can attach to my normal skill. And that's increased the range on my attack shockwave. So far the UI is looking pretty clean. Monsters are growing stronger, that's not good. Oh, Almost dead. Got my Q, let's heal. Yeah, they are growing stronger indeed. Wait, I think I was supposed to die. Right? Um, I've just come back alive and I'm doing big damage now. So yeah, I think I was supposed to die. My character is fast and angry. Super Saiyan Berserker, what? Supreme Will, okay, let's dodge that. What are these damage numbers? I'm popping like 10 million damage. I'm attacking super fast. I've turned into a god. Yeah, that's a fun start to the game. Give me a taste of big damage. Yes, please. That's how you start an ARPG. You give the player a taste of what's to come. And what's to come feels extremely Extremely fast paced. I like that. Some deities descending upon me. Mommy! She's coming to rescue us. And we've spawned into Ember's Rest. And it's on fire. We're out of one problem area into another, by the looks of it. Kill these things. Level two. By the way, apologies for my voice today. I think I've got tonsillitis. I'm feeling a little bit sick. Probably going to deteriorate as we progress through this video. I'm losing a lot of health. The monsters don't mess around, even though it's just the start of the game. They deal damage to you. I can respect that. Crude wooden sword. Mate, that doesn't look so wooden to me. And I can actually see what this new sword looks like on my character. It's not just a stat item. It is something that changes the visuals as well. I got myself a new ability. My W, it's like a jumping attack. Feels pretty good. Oh, if I hold it down, I can just spam it. That actually feels so fun. I don't know why I thought it would have a long cooldown associated with it. <laughs> So my class actually has insane mobility since I can do this. I think I made the right class choice. Little boss has popped out. We've got stuff on the floor to avoid. A bunch of loot has just exploded from this guy. Wait, so can I use this big two-handed hammer? Okay, hello, rock hammer. Just unlock talents. Let's have a read. Strength, attack, and fire. It's obviously going to be this one, isn't it? God of might. Attack damage, obviously. Those are some rather impactful percentages. Quick look at the world map. 3D looks pretty good. I'm guessing as you travel throughout the world, you find these fast travel points and you can just teleport between them. The quickest way to move throughout the world as this character is just doing his jumping attack over and over. I hope this doesn't get nerfed. It's too fun. Don't mind me. Just stomping everything in my way. Next zone, the ancient battleground. Let's activate the teleports. So I've got 36% attack damage from here, 24% attack damage from here, and I'm only level 5. The talents in this game seem really impactful compared to other AI 
RPGs I've played. Normally you'll get pathetic percentage increases that you hardly even notice. 2%, 3%, not Torchlight Infinite. You're very quickly on the path to big damage. And it's boss time. Do some avoidable mechanics. Well, I say it's avoidable, I'm almost dead. The game actually has a decent amount of challenge early on, which I really appreciate. And now we're at Ember's Rest, the city that we was trying to save. And this is where you also start to see other players running around. Oh, you can buy some cosmetics, can you? This one's cool. I'm kind of curious what the other classes play like because the Berserker just feels really strong. Super fun as well. If the other classes are as fun as the Berserker, then that's a very good sign. This boss is messing me up. Uh, am I strong enough? Oh. Potentially not. So I've died and I've got to teleport to the boss room here. So even though I died, when I re-enter the boss room, the boss's health doesn't actually reset, which is really forgiving, actually. Really forgiving, actually. Kind of needs to be, because it turns out I'm bloody terrible at this game. There we go. Well, we got it in the end. I love the way this berserk is designed. Like, this whole power thing where, like, the more he attacks, he builds up, and then he just has insane attack speed. Super fun. You just feel like an absolute god. Even an early game, which isn't usually the case in ARPGs. Two more talent points. 15% crit rating. So this is like an execute on all of my abilities when a mob's at 18%. What? These talents are so so impactful. Almost all of the abilities in this game are designed to have like no cooldown. You've constantly got something to press. <sighs> what is that attack speed? Dude! <laughs> this game's so fun! <laughs> The attack speed and damage multipliers just enable you to do the most crazy things. I absolutely love it. That can't be allowed, surely. If the combat's this fun and fast-paced at level 11, literally just started the game, I can't even imagine how mental it's going to be when you get to, like, max level or deep into the late game, when you've got all of your talents unlocked, all of the crazy skill modifiers and percentage increases. It's going to be nutty. More stuff to avoid. Jump out of that. Dodge. Hit him in the back. Get crushed by a robot and we are dead. Level 13, you've unlocked the Pact system, check it out. This seems to be another way that I can build out my character. To unlock the DPS tree, I need to be level 20. Seems like gear is starting to get a little bit more interesting. I've now unlocked epic and legendary gear drops. Got little sperm creatures attacking me now. Go away, sperm monsters, leave me alone. This feels like an end of chapter kind of boss fight. Quite an epic boss fight, really. Oh, what? Phase two, mutated Liv? She's turned into a full-fledged demon. Yo, yeah, this is definitely an end of chapter boss. Just when I thought the fight was over. Liv dealing some damage. By far the longest boss fight we've had in the game so far. The most intense one we've had as well. That was a badass cutscene. New hero trait unlocked. What's this? Based on this hero trait tree, it would suggest that level 80 might be max level. I might be wrong though. And I guess we're now flying off to a new zone. Chapter 2 awaits. This is a cool environment. Stop right there. The unclean. Mate, I've just saved your temple from a demon invasion. I'm obviously going to need to wash my hands. I guess this is going to be the new hub area of chapter two. And a nice looking hub area it is. Lots of players running around. Oh, lots of rewards to claim. I like the audio visual feedback from the UI when you claim things. It's very well done. Feels like I've been a good boy. Good job, UI designers. When selecting these abilities, it'd be good if there was a little preview window pop up that shows you what the ability looks like so you can get a visual idea rather than just trying to understand the ability by purely reading it right now i have no idea if i should take icy blade or ground shaker we'll go with ground shaker test out on some monsters seems strong epics all over the place my bag's full again having a hard time keeping on top of all of this gear now just gonna end up deleting half of it finally level 20 oh so now i can select a second talent if i want to the brave one-handed weapon and armor all-rounded combat expert go on then more or attack damage dude you can go such heavy glass cannon attack speed build in this game it's so fun now that i've reached level 20 i'm fully equipped and i've been dealing big damage i don't want to spoil this game too much in this video so i'm just going to check out a few of the other classes and then we're going to wrap up this first impressions we're looking for a mage class and yes she's going to fit the bill isn't she so this is my right click and every few casts i let out an explosion 
pretty cool. I've literally just zoned into the game and I can already tell that this is going to be an insane AoE class. This is just exactly what you want from an ARPG. The game is just fun instantly from level one. At first I thought it was just the Berserker where this was the case, but it seems like all the classes are just fun right off the bat. I don't know if I'm allowed to say this, but this game fucking wrecks Diablo Immortal. It's so much better. It's just way more fun. So with that now, I think would be a good time to wrap up this video. So after playing for a few hours, my first impressions of Torchlight Infinite are as follows. Extremely fast and fun gameplay. I love how many skills have short cooldowns or no cooldown at all. Good gameplay is the most important thing for me in any game, and I think Torchlight Infinite succeeds in this right from level 1. The UI looks very clean for a mobile PC cross-platform game. I absolutely loved how impactful choosing talents, augmenting your skills, and creating your own unique build feels. Throughout this video, I was questioning if two of my Berserker abilities, Leap Attack and Berserking Blade, were actually bugged and supposed to have a cooldown because in a normal ARPG, they wouldn't let you have fun like that. The game seems to be very free to play friendly. I checked out the cash shop and it only contains convenience items and a gacha system for heroes and packed spirits. Compared to something like Diablo Immortal, the difference is night and day. No obnoxious pop-ups with 800% value baiting me to the cash shop. All reasonable stuff so far that didn't make me feel like the game's just waiting to bend me over and yoink the wallet. Visually, I think Torchlight Infinite looks quite good, nice stylized graphics that look great on both PC and mobile. The cutscenes and storytelling so far seemed pretty good. Unlike a lot of mobile PC cross-platform games, there's no daily timed online events or time gates. You can just pick it up and play as much as you want. There's also a completely free trading system. The game also seems to have a decent amount of challenge to it. Even though I felt completely OP as hell on my Berserker, I was still dying to bosses all the time. This is just a small thing, but whenever the game gave me a choice of multiple skills, I really wish that included a skill preview window actually displaying each skill so I could make better informed decisions on skill choice from quest rewards. When you progress through the game and loot is just popping out everywhere, it can be tedious clicking on all that loot. It kind of disrupts the fast flow of the gameplay, so if they could improve the loot system, add a loot filter that just collects epics, legendaries or gear score upgrades, that would make the gameplay even better. Although you do see other players running around in the chapter hubs, I haven't seen any multiplayer content yet. This this game isn't an MMORPG and it doesn't market itself as such, which I don't mind. As this is more of an MMORPG channel though, I'm assuming some of you might get that multiplayer itch later on. Overall, from what I've played in this beta test, Torchlight Infinite has by far the best gameplay out of any other cross-platform PC, mobile, ARPG I've played so far. It's faster, more responsive and has more builds customization than Diablo Immortal. It seems to actually have a decent free to play business model, and I was shocked how engaged the game kept me during my time playing due to the very real threat of dying, even whilst feeling like an absolute god due to my crazy attack speed build. I'm pleasantly surprised, and this is the latest example of a game that does a great job of blurring the lines between PC and mobile without compromising the gameplay. But that's it for this video guys, apologies for my voice in this vid, unfortunately I had the flu whilst recording, but as always let me know your thoughts on Torchlight Infinite in the comments below, is this a game that you're going to try out come full release? Shout out to the devs for sponsoring this video and allowing me to talk freely and honestly about their game. Click the link in the description below to go to the official website.